what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel you already know who i am i'm your boy fauci and this is fauci cinema um today i am here to talk to you guys about a new fan film that was just released yesterday on november 29th uh from our boy peter anthony uh roseblood friday the 13th fan film this a while back i did a trailer reaction to this and this movie had me super hyped up. I'm not a huge fan of Friday the 13th Part 7 in the direction that that movie went, but this trailer had me very intrigued about changing my mind about that movie and thinking this movie was going to be badass. So today I'm going to give you my thoughts on the fan film from Peter Anthony, um, which actually starred Terry Kaiser uh, for a little bit as Dr. Cruz, and we also got to see... Laura Park Lincoln reprised her role of Tina from the 1988 Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. Um, it was good to see her back. It's good to see these uh, older characters return to these fan films. Like, these aren't even films that are making money. These are fan films. So it's really cool to see that they're showing back up to support the Friday the 13th franchise and to support these fans' dreams of making their own film. Um... This is going to be a spoiler review, so if you have not seen the movie, go check it out and then come back here and hear my crazy thoughts on this film. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Part 7, so I didn't know what to expect from this one. Um, you know, for me, this is just me. Um, it was a little slow, a little slower than I'm used to in a Friday the 13th film. Um, the first act... You know, just kind of getting introduced, see what's going on and whatnot. Um, the second one's slowly building up. And then we really don't see Jason until about the third act of the film, which is kind of a downfall for me. Um, being a Friday the 13th fan film, I want to see Jason up front and center uh, pretty much the entire time. <clears throat> I know Never Hike Alone kind of went that way as well, and it worked. Um, so I can see why Peter Anthony might have wanted to do that in drag it out you know kind of like the jaws effect not showing the shark until near closer to the end of the film um but i wanted to see jason up front and center um because whenever you do see jason those scenes at the end of the film the third act is fantastic it's badass it's action-packed you get the blood the gore the carnage candy we want to see um so i do appreciate the third act of this film more than the first two but I could see where they were needed, you know, to establish, you know, the story in this. Because this isn't just picking, it is picking up right after part seven. But you kind of need to know why Tina's where she's at, what's going on. Um, obviously, it opens up. She's at a research facility in Camp Crystal Lake. Why they'd want to keep her there, obviously, just to probably bring back the memories and get her powers to work. Um, she are introduced to Roseblood. She's another you know, patient with uh, telekinetic and, and whatnot powers. Um, and obviously her and Tina become friends throughout this movie. And, and you can actually see the friendship that they do have. But it seems like Roseblood is more aggressive. She's more evil than Tina is. And Roseblood is capable uh, of murder, obviously. Uh, within this film, she kills an entire room. You know, of guards and doctors and whatnot. And the army the army people and whatnot so she's obviously capable of murder unlike tina she's more of the kind-hearted soul so she really only uses her powers you know to defend herself and not to you know lead to death like rosebud um so jason has no idea what he's in for they want to they're trying to get tina and rosebud to lead Jason there because they have his mask up on the wall and they have all of the weapons that he used from part 7 which is really cool because it had the weed weed whacker thing had the axe had that thing with the I don't know what the hell it is that he killed Miss, Mrs. Shepard with it had that on the wall the look of Jason was it was pretty good obviously this is a fan film so it's you know you're on a limited budget you can only do so much with what you have I thought Jason looked pr pretty good um you know, looks a little, I don't know, a little rubbery to me. 
but that's okay. I mean, it's expected in these fan films. I get it. The quality of the film looked great. Um, the color grading may be a little bit off. I'm not sure. I would have went with a different type of color grading if I was doing it. I don't, I don't know how to explain how I felt about this. The look of it. I don't know. You could tell it was professionally shot. It, it looked great, but there was just something a little bit off for me. Just for me. Just a little bit of nitpicking, that's all. Nothing against the filmmakers or the crew or anything like that. I understand this is a fan film, and I understand working on a limited budget. I get it. So I'm, and, and heck, I couldn't do any of this. So mad props to the whole team for what you guys did. Um, the guy that played Jason I thought was fantastic. Um, it really brought back those Kane Hodder vibes. I definitely was feeling that throughout this film. And like I said, the third act, the kills, blood and guts everywhere jason was using anything he could use to kill people he did use that tree trimmer on that girl and you see the guts falling out on the floor that's what we wanted to see in part seven um there was cutting throats smashing faces like there was blood everywhere any way you can imagine someone being killed peter anthony put it into this film and delivered it and also a thumbs up to peter anthony who was actually in the film as well and i don't know if you went to acting school or not buddy but you are damn good you are very believable for sure and i mean even though you had to die but it happens it happens i'd have myself killed if i was in a movie too um but definitely stay tuned to the third act because that's when things heat up in rose blood um just saying she brings back a little character that she'd never seen in a Friday the 13th film before. I know we've seen Jason versus Freddy, but this guy makes an appearance and I lost my mind. Lost my mind, dude. We didn't get to see like the whole fight or anything, but just the fact that they, were, they showed Michael Myers in this film, they played the Halloween theme song as he was standing in the back in the, in the fire ring chill bumps up and down dude peter i thank you so much for bringing michael myers into this universe i don't know what the point of it was really i mean just to get rid of jason obviously roseblood wanted to get somebody who could fight jason and take care of him damn damn michael myers that's all i gotta say about that i was just fired up to see michael myers in a friday the 13th film so thank you for that um we said well oh, wait also got a cameo from Nick from, from Part 7 as well. You might remember him as Tina's love interest. He She showed up in this as well. Another cool homage to Part 7. Another character coming back to show love to the franchise. That showed love to them. So that was amazing. Um, the ending, as what you expect, you expect Tina to take care of business um, as it goes back to the present time. And by the way, Roseblood dies in this film. Didn't see that coming. Jason comes back, stabs her right through the chest. Badass. Rosebud's taken out. And then we got Tina, Lark Park Lincoln, comes back at the end of the film, like I said. And Jason's there again. It's just her versus Jason. And she is, as usual, messing him up. And of course, the way that he goes out is a little bit wonky. I don't. I don't. She opens up like this teleport. I don't know, like this portal to another dimension, maybe? I have no idea. And she's forcing Jason down with her telekinetic powers. I guess that's just because how strong she is to get him out of this realm and to put him into another. Um, I guess, in, in, obviously, with this timeline, anything is possible because of the telekinetic powers. And obviously, they elaborated on their powers a little bit more. So, who knows what they're capable of? But Tina obviously can do anything. Opened up that portal to another dimension. Pushed Jason through. It seals. And then it's just Nick and Tina embracing to end this film. And the credits roll. So uh, for me, obviously, it started off on a kind of a, a down a down trend for me in the beginning of this film. But as we went along, it definitely, definitely raised the bar. Um, it's a fan film, so I really don't want to give it a... a a rating but if i had to um just based on the third act alone i'd have to give it a 
I'd probably give it a three and a half out of five, which is pretty damn good, especially being a fan film. It's pretty good. Um, the kills are way better than part seven, so if you didn't like part seven kills, you're gonna think these kills are amazing. But mad props to Peter Anthony and his crew um, for what you guys did. You delivered, you put another great fan film in the list of Friday the 13th fan films. So I cannot give you enough props for that. Yes, I nitpicked a little bit. Yes, there were some things I liked, some things I didn't like, but I mean, that happens in the best of movies for sure. So, I mean, I, I criticized some things in Halloween 78. That's my favorite movie of all time. So every movie for the most part has some, some flaws or some criticisms. So no disrespect whatsoever. Hopefully you guys enjoyed what I had to say. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the movie. Keep supporting these fan films because my boy James Grimm got another one. That'll be coming out pretty damn soon. It's in post-production right now. Can't wait to see that one and support my brother. Um, that's all I got to say. So you guys have a scary day. And watch out for Tina because she's just as crazy as Jason is.